Every day we are bombarded by reports of war and possible war. And it seems at this point that avoiding, you know, a major war is pretty much impossible. In fact, you know, we have a couple of wars going on right now that the United States is heavily involved in. We all know about the war with Russia and Ukraine, which the United States has been pretty much 100% funding for the last three years with hundreds of billions of dollars worth of support and weapons. We have Israel and Hamas now. They're in Gaza. We have Israel and Iran just getting ready to completely explode in the Middle East at any time. That would directly involve the United States. Other than just resources, the United States will have military assets that are actually helping Israel, I think, fight with Iran when this actually breaks out. And that definitely could go nuclear. And if the United States isn't helping Israel to fight Iran, and Iran starts crushing Israel, which I think they can militarily, then Israel, in my opinion, will use nuclear weapons. And then Russia will probably get involved. China could possibly get involved also, but Russia, definitely. If Israel uses nuclear weapons against Iran, then Russia more than likely would get involved, which would bring the United States and NATO and total third world war. We have China. As I already said, that they are planning on taking Taiwan. They haven't done it yet. They've run maneuvers and things like that, but more than likely in the future, when they know they can, then they will take Taiwan. We have North Korea could invade or could start the war back up with South Korea. In fact, I think that when China decides to take Taiwan, that they will give Kim Jong-un the go-ahead to attack South Korea, which that will uh, separate United States resources there from Taiwan to South Korea, and there'll be war everywhere in the United States. Military is at its weakest point in a long time, in my opinion, and they're going to be spread out even more. So Third World War is looking likely, but not looking like the United States is going to come out like we think that we should. It ain't going, it's not going to be like, you know, when we, United States, invaded Iraq. Just so like take Iran, for example. They're much more powerful now than they were 20 years ago. They have much more advanced weapon systems. And in fact, I hadn't heard, when I made my last video, I had not read that they actually used some hypersonic missiles. But now they're saying that Iran used some hypersonic missiles in their attack on Israel a couple of days ago, and that all the hypersonic missiles went right through and hit their targets. That's what I'm hearing now. You hear so many things when it comes to war, and there's so much propaganda, so many, so much lies, so much mis misrepresentation, so many people trying to mislead everyone else and trying to mislead the facts to make themselves look like they're more powerful than what they are, more successful. I mean, it's difficult to wade through all the bullshit to get to, you know, the truth. But with all that said, war looks like it is inevitable and quite possibly a world, third world war. We're already in a third world war, but right now it's more with proxies in, in several different places going on around the world. Plus, it's mostly right now economic. The United States is losing economically also. But if you have, you know, a wounded animal like the United States is losing the hegemony, the ability to control everything around the world and have great influence on other countries around the world and dictate what these countries do, when you had that for so long and you start to lose that, then that's a good combination also for that country that's losing that to lash out to start, you know, a third kinetic war because they think that they can win and who knows they might have some secret weapons in space and things where they might be able to actually pull it off and i don't know i don't have any secret knowledge about secret weapon systems in space and things like that but it's a possibility but you can pretty much guarantee that the united states has it russia and China also has pretty much the same thing or counters to what the United States has. So who knows you know, how advanced everything is right now. However, we need to realize that war is probably coming. Hopefully it doesn't happen right here on U.S. soil, 
But with the border wide open, it definitely could have a lot of things happen here on U.S. soil. In fact, you know, some people are predicting a civil war here in the United States. But even if that doesn't happen with that southern border wide open, with everyone coming over here, sleeper cells and things like that, just fighting for resources could happen here in the United States. Who knows at this point? How bad it's going to get, but in my opinion, where everything is looking, it's looking like it's going to get really bad over the next few years. So I decided to make a video today to talk about some of the ways to prepare for war. Hopefully this video helps. Hopefully you can use some of this information to better prepare for what I think is coming. And please, please, please take this seriously. Look around. Look at everything going on. Don't just brush it off as being fear-mongering. Look around at what's going on and know the possibility is high that it will affect everyone here in the United States. It will affect everyone around the world. And if you aren't prepared, you'll have a much more difficult time surviving through it. If you're prepared, it's going to be easier. No guarantees, but if you don't prepare, it's, you're guaranteed to have a really hard time during any type of crisis. But the first thing you need to focus on is water. I have an article here on my website, www.emdecreekmore.com, that talks about how to store water, how to purify water. I'm not going to go into all that in this video because you can go right here in this article and you, know, you can read what I wrote down through here about finding water, filters, boiling water, this method, water purification tablets, purification with bleach, distillation, pre-filtering, storage. I mean, all I all went through here is several different points about storing and purifying water. And you can get whole books on actually doing this. There's all kinds of videos here on YouTube about doing this. I have a whole chapter about this in my book, The Purpose Guide to Surviving, Then World We Know It, Gear Skills and Related Know-How. There's other articles here on my website about that. Just go right here in the search and put water in here and search for that. Get water filters. Uh, there's several different ones that are available. Do some research and find what you can afford. Now get, you know, a water filter. You want to have pure, unscented bleach, water purification tablets and things like that. You can boil water. There's different ways to do it. But you want to look at what's best for you in your situation and figure out as many ways as possible to have clean, safe drinking water. You want to also go on Google Earth, for example, and look at your location and look around to find any water sources. Do you have lakes nearby? Do you have rivers nearby? Do you have, you know, creeks and streams and springs nearby? Can you catch rainwater? Look at your situation and figure out what you need to be water independent and start working on that right now because it's extremely important. Now you can go for, depending on your health, depending on your age and your health and things like that, you can go for, you know, a month or more without eating. It won't be, it wouldn't be fun. Some people can't go that long. Some people can. Like I said, it depends on the person and their overall health, but you can definitely go longer without eating than you can without clean drinking water. You have to have clean drinking water. So that's why it's on number one on my list. Number two is food storage. And over here is another arc on my website about food storage. You can see here, that's actually some that's actually some of my food storage right there. You can go down through here, all kinds of things about food storage, three month food storage checklist for adults, and it goes through different lists. And this is the basic food storage. I mean you can buy pre made pre-packaged survival food that's more expensive, but it's quick and it's easy. You can buy that. Like from my Patreon supply, there's a link down in the description box below. You can check that out. It's an instant affiliate link. But I suggest you actually go to supermarket and stock up. Hard red wine or wheat is great if you can find it cheap enough to stockpile where you are. Rice, pinto beans, oats, this is just basic food stockpiles. You can see and I talk about each one down through this article here. And again, in my books, I also have, you know, checklists and things like that for food storage. But, and here's a chart with shelf, uh, approximate shelf lives of different foods. I mean, don't forget about your pets. Three-month food supply for one adult. I mean, it's a huge article, as you can see, into your guys. Grain meals. Grain meal right over there also. This is actually a Warner Jr. grain meal. It's one of my favorite grain meals. But all the way through here is a huge article 
That's free to go read. I talk about different grain mills here. Ones I recommend, how to grind grains, how to clean field run wheat. I mean, all the way to think about sprouting for greens. Use my articles because they're free. You can get a lot of information by reading these articles. Go read, look at these articles, and try to put some of this stuff into practice. This here is sprouting where you use, you know, different seeds like mug beans and things like that. You can actually get a mason jar with screen to use as a filter to filter the water out and keep the seed in and you just soak that several times a day and then put it in the sink let it drain out and in a few days you'll have this right here fresh greens which makes your food and storage go a lot farther as you can see here different cooking methods i mean i have a lot of articles here guys that people Come on YouTube in the comments. Well, you're telling all the problems. How about the solutions? I have the solutions. The solutions is prepping. And you can find most of my information over my, over my website. And if you want to buy my books, that's great. I appreciate it. It helps out a lot. But you don't really have to. I have so much over here on my website that's totally free. Years of research, years of study, years of actually doing and putting this stuff into practice. And it's all right here on my website. I'm surprised that more people don't go over here and use this website. You can go over here and put your email in right here and hit subscribe. And you'll join 8,633 right now subscribers. And anytime I post a new article on this website, you'll get an email notification. And, you know, first aid here. It's another article right here, guys. A link to these down the description box below, but they're also available right up here, across through here. You can just click on and go to these different things. What are the best medications to stockpile? You can see that through here. Talks about prevention, fitness. And there I am back when I was a little bit younger, showing the guns off. And all the way down through here, guys, information about health. Different books, different supplements, get enough sleep, get physical, strength training, recommend it. I mean, push-ups, pull-ups, set-ups, squats, endurance, cardiovascular endurance training. Sex happens. Mm. My birth control methods and things like that and staying healthy. I mean, first aid kits, medical kits, over-the-counter medications, supplements and herbs, dental health. So much information, guys. Recommended books is available on my website. Unfortunately, a lot of people hasn't taken advantage of that. Food, water, medical. And oh, here's another article. This was actually written by uh, Amanda. You can see it through here. It talks about shelf lives and different grains and beans and things like that and different tips. Make use of my website to get prepared use the checklist use the different things to get prepared and to get ready for war because in my opinion it's a coming and guys you also need to consider what you're going to do as far as your energy sources goes how are you going to heat your home how are you going to supply electricity to your home are you going to have a generator if so do you have spare parts for that generator can you actually repair that generator do you have tools do you have fuel put back to run that generator? Do you have a solar generator? I suggest if you can afford it to get both a good solar generator with solar panels and a gasoline-powered generator. You know, like one of the smaller Honda generators is perfect because they actually use very little fuel and they're not really all that loud. If you have those two and you have, you know, some spare parts for that gasoline-powered generator, especially when it comes to the carburetor system, you want to be able to work on that, repair that, and fix that. You want to have fuel put back 100%. Gasoline without any ethanol is best. You can put stable in that, but I suggest that you try to find 100% gasoline to use in your small engines because if you use the regular gasoline like this available at most pumps, it can actually clog that car carburetor up and screw your whole system up and your generator won't start and won't run but having spare parts for that will definitely help if that does happen but you want to use the best gasoline you can 100 percent gasoline is what i recommend you use in all of your small engines especially something critical like your generator how are you going to heat your home do you have kerosene do you have natural gas do you have a wood stove think about this because your power could go down you may have to supply you know all of your own power Here's an article I wrote. 
what are the best alternative heat sources to use during a power outage? Again, free on my website. You can see here it's a huge article. We talk about location, your home, dress for the cold, and how to do that with record different recommended items, the urban or rural igloo. I came up with this my I came up with this my own self and they, and it actually works because I tried this out. You can the article, go read it, it's pretty simple. Firewood storage. Use the website, guys. Don't let this resource go to waste. Use the website. I'll link these articles. Scratch your box below. You can check these out. But here's another article. You can see this one's written by uh, Robert B. And he set up, you know, a, his own solar unit here. There's all kinds of articles here about these different things. You can see here I hooked the batteries up, diagrams for power. And I also have a lot of this stuff available in my books. Like I said, if you want to help me out by buying my books, you can do that and help me out and get some good information also. But definitely use this website. And guys, something else you might want to look into and consider doing is building a Faraday cage or a Faraday box or a Faraday room to protect your, you know, your electronics in case of an EMP or a CME. Here's a good article talking just about that by Dr. Arthur Bradley. He's one of the top people when it comes to EMP and building Faraday cages and boxes. You can see here are simple designs. What is a Faraday cage? What does it do? With photographs and things and all kinds of different things that you're talking about that. How to build a room in your house. How to protect red dot and laser sights from EMP. Another article here, another video on me, this is him talking about this, testing uh, the shielding and effectiveness of a metal garbage can. Great resource, guys. And I hate that so many people don't take advantage of this. It's right there. It's free. And people are always complaining. You are always talking about the problems, but never the solutions. I have a whole bunch of solutions on my website and in my books, and people just use that and take advantage of that resource. And guys, since we are preparing for war, it's important to have certain things put back, in my opinion, in case you actually need those, like things like, you know, a Geiger counter. This one right here is one of the best, I think, for most people because it's easiest to read. There's different ones, but this one right here, yeah, it's very simple. It's about 120 bucks. You can hear. You can see it's easy to read. Very simple. Runs off of batteries. You can you can recharge those batteries also. And it's about 100. I think it's 125 bucks for this. And it's one of the simplest. That you can have you can also mount this if you want to like in your shelter or inside your home you just press the button to turn it on and it reads you can see here we've got 21 cpm right now but i think this is one of the best ones as far as for the average person to use because it's so simple you might want to look into something like potassium iodide Something else to consider, you might want to look into getting you no know, protective equipment like a gas mask, for example. There's different kinds. This is actually the Israeli military gas mask. So it's important, guys, to stockpile some of this stuff in order to get you know, a full chemical biological suit, boots, cover, head cover, and everything, you know, for the possibility, you know, of a nuclear war, nuclear fallout, chemicals. I know it's something you don't want to think about because it is horrifying, actually, to think about that, having to survive through that, but it's something you should think about because it definitely, you know, it definitely could happen. I hope that it, hopefully that it does it. I pray that it does it. I hope that we can get through all this and work everything out and live in peace, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And, you know, if you read, you know, the book of Revelation, it's not the prophecy. The prophecy is war strife turmoil hard times so you need to prepare for that and if you prepare and if it doesn't happen that's great at least you still prepare and you were ready for it if it did and that would take a lot of stress and worry you know off of you 
because if you're not prepared, you will worry a lot more, be a lot more stressed. Everything you see and hear about you be like <laughs> scared to death because you're horrified that it's going to happen. You're not prepared for that. If you're already prepared and you hear about these things, you're like, I hope it doesn't happen. But you feel better on the inside knowing that you've done everything you can to prepare and you are ready as best as you can be. So, you know, like I said, consider, you might want to consider something like potassium iodide tablets, a Geiger counter, gas mask, nuclear biological chemical, mask and suits, boots, duct tape, and guys, something else to consider is communications. How are you going to find out what's going on you know, around the world? Just because the power grid is down here in the United States doesn't mean it is somewhere else. And if you have something like you know, a shortwave radio, like that over there, the good shortwave radio, and especially if you have you know, an external antenna for that to go outside to pick up a better signal, you can listen to a lot of different things going on around the world on that shortwave radio, and a lot of those are actually in English. Two-way communications is also important. GMRS radios to talk within your family, within your group, within your community to coordinate together to help each other and to call for assistance of your neighbors. You know, if something happens, your family, your friends, two-way radios are good, but you need to put these inside of a fire day cage just in case, you know, something does happen to those. Or if you can afford it and you want to have some out and some in the Fire day cage also you can have you can double up you know and buy two of those unfortunately those are about 500 bucks but in my opinion they're worth it you can get cheaper ones you can get the ones that got their solar panel they're a lot smaller but they have their own solar panel crank operated also to charge the batteries up i have one of those two and you can get multiples because one could fail one could something could happen electronics things do happen that never could go down if it does i have you know backup GMRS radios, ham radios, uh, MERS radios, CB radio, whatever works best for you and your neighbors and your family, but figure out how you're going to communicate with those people, with your family or friends or neighbors, without, you know, cell phones and regular house phones and things like that. You need two-way radios for communications. You need stuff like ham radio for two-way communications and to listen and gather information. Short wave, long wave, AM and FM radio like that to listen to what's going on around the world, to stay informed. But communication is extremely important, and I think it's overlooked a lot in a proper community. Some people will talk about it, but a lot of people don't actually do it. The people talking about it and showing, like on these YouTube videos, probably are because they like radios and things like that. There's a channel, uh, not not a Rubicon. It's a really good channel when it comes to GMRS radios and things like that. Very good channel. He's funny also. So I suggest you go watch this channel if you're interested in learning about, you know, like especially GMS, GMRS radios. You also want to be able to grow your own food. Put in, you know, some raised beds. Store back some garden seeds, preferably you know, non-hybrid heirloom garden seeds because they reproduce year after year and stay true. If you use these hybrids that you can buy at most places like Walmart, you can plant those. They will grow one year and grow great, usually, if you, if you do your part and your soil is good. However, the next succeeding years, it's unpredictable. They might grow great. They might not. It's unpredictable. You get it one year. And it's pretty predictable. But then the next year, it is it. With the non-hybrid seeds, the heirloom seeds, they stay true every year. You grow, you harvest some of those seeds, put those back, plant those next year, and you get similar plants the next year. So you can keep on going with those type of seeds. Gardening tools, you might want to look at, you know, flea markets and yard sales and things like that to pick up gardening tools. Uh, learn how to garden. Get some books on how to do this. Start small. If you don't know how to if you don't know how to garden if you never did it before start out with a couple of raised beds and then expand but if you want to go big go big it definitely can't hurt it's a lot of work but if you have 10 12 15 raised beds that's great if you can till up a large portion of your yard to plant that directly in the soil you can do that out there's different ways of doing it greenhouses secret greenhouses i talked about that in a video a few days ago about building you know a secret greenhouse and you can have chickens, you can get rabbits, you can get ducks, turkeys, uh, goats, cattle, whatever you have room for, and that will help you be able to produce some of your own food to expand your food stores and have 
you know, fresh vegetables. Canned vegetables, canned fruits are good. However, nothing beats fresh out of the garden. Just like eggs. Fresh eggs right out of the chicken coop are much better than, you know, the store-bought eggs are much fresher. Try to grow as much of your own food as you possibly can, if possible. Even if the, you know, if you have even a small a quarter acre, you can do something, a couple of raised beds, and something beats nothing. If nothing else, you will gain skill and knowledge about how to grow food. And nothing, and there's nothing better to me than actually getting your hands, you know, in that soil, and actually planting seeds and watching those grow, watching those come out of the soil and push it up and grow bigger and larger. And you watch those all year. And you tend to those, take care of those, and then at the end, of the, and then at the end of the growing season for that plant, you can take and get like your tomatoes, your cucumbers, your carrots out of the ground. I mean, it's I love gardening, and no doubt if you start doing it, you will start to love it too. And guys, anytime there is major economic troubles or war, if you look at World War II, there's lots of bartering going on. Bartering is a good way to make transactions. If you have something someone else wants, they have something you want, you can trade, barter for that. Putting back, you know, things like mercury dimes. I like silver better than gold. I can't afford gold, but I like silver better for barter. And I like things like mercury dimes the best because if you have, you know, silver rounds, for example, or silver bars, most people... Aren't going to look at. They're going to look at that and think it's a con. They just don't know. It's not put into their brains. They've seen paper currency and you know coins for so long. They think that is money. They think it's the only money. The only the only way to exchange something for something else. Mercury dimes are easy to recognize. That's why I like those. You know more than anything else. Ninety percent silver. So if you can get those, stock up on those. And they're small. And you can use those for small barter exchanges. You know, if you have an ounce of silver or ounce of gold, I mean, it's going, and someone else has a chicken that you want or a dozen of eggs, you have an ounce of gold, how are you going to separate that? You could maybe cut some of that off or something like that or melt some of that down in the smaller, smaller weights to be able to barter for smaller things. But if you have mercury dimes, you know, it's pretty easy to work out how much they're worth, how much what he has is worth, and to work out a deal. Uh, skills is good for barter. If you have skills, you can offer someone else, and they have something that you need, and you have some skill that they need for you to work on something or fix something. If you can do that for something they have, that's great. So having skills is good, tools and things. To, tools are good barter items, but they're also good to know how to use those tools for your specific trade, that we can use the skills you have and then barter those skills for something else someone else has that you need in that barter economy, barter system. And we're going to go to more of a barter system, in my opinion. If you have, if you, have you know, an economy that is down in the dumps, that is crashing, that is crashed, if you have hyperinflation of the dollar, barter is going to be big. War, barter is going to be big. This great reset we keep hearing about, barter will be great there too because... They're going to set this thing up. What they have plans, the Great Reset Agenda comes through to have, you know, a digital currency, and they're going to know everything you buy, everything you do. But if you can barter for something else, they still can't track that. They're going to hate that, but they can't track that. You know, if your neighbor has something you need and you have a skill or something to barter also to him, you can trade, and that's going to keep them from knowing everything you're doing. You know, if he has a... A gun, for example, that you want, and you have something he needs really bad, you can barter, and there's no paper trail there. There's no online trail to let them know what you bought because you're not using their digital currency, their central bank digital currencies. So you can be more anonymous by using barter. You know, if this does happen where they have this uh, system, the social credit score system, and they completely do away with cash. And all you have is their central bank digital current digital currencies that they can control if they monitor. Being able to barter will be the only way to have any financial freedom at all. Financial uh, privacy, I mean, at all. Next thing is one most people like to talk about, and that is defense. 
guns, ammunition. If you don't know how to shoot a gun safely, if you don't know how to use that effectively, you need to learn. You need to get, if you don't have it already, something to defend your home with, preferably multiple somethings, but it does get expensive. You know, a handgun, AR-15, bolt action rifle, pump action shotgun, 22 rifle, 22 pistol. The more the more you have as far as different calibers and things goes to a certain point, the better. You know, there's no need to have, you know, 75 different calibers. I like to keep things simple. I like to have, you know, 9 millimeter, 45, 38 special, 22, 308, 223, 5.56, uh, 308, 12 gauge, 20 gauge. Use the basic common calibers and stockpile those by firearms, chamber it knows, learn how to use those. I want to look into getting things like, you know, body armor and stuff like that too. Gas mask, for example, could be used. Look at your home. How can you set your home up to be more defendable? How can you make it more difficult for thieves to break in your home? How can you make it more resistant to home invasion? Do you have a good dog? Do you have security cameras? Do you have early warning systems? Do you have positions that are already predetermined for your family and your group to go to to defend your property that are safe positions outside and inside your home? Uh, have you worked through drills? Say someone's breaking in this door. Do you and your family know exactly what to do and when to do it? Or if they're coming through the door, is your family going to be like, what to do you should have this stuff all figured out and know exactly they're coming to the door i go here you go here you go here you go here and you do this you get ready for this when this happens you do this you should already be predetermined and you should be able to do this in the middle of the night there should be drills ran catch your kids asleep your wife asleep your husband asleep and let them know that's going to be a drill coming but don't tell them exactly when. Because you don't want to panic them out, scare the kids to death. There's going to be a drill that's going to happen. It's going to happen sometime during the night, but you don't know exactly when it's going to be. You don't tell them when it's going to be. And then have this drill. Act like someone's coming through the door and do everything you need to be doing. Because you don't want to be, if someone's coming through this door, your back door, your front door, your window, they're coming through both. You don't want to be like, what should I do? Because you're not going to be thinking correctly. It's going to be happening quickly. You could be just been in bed asleep and just woke up you want to be able to function without actually thinking about what to do you want to already know what to do you want to have the weapons ammunition skills to be able to defend your property defend your home defend your family anyways guys hope that this helps i cover a lot of information here and hopefully it wasn't too boring hopefully it kept you all watching because it's important, I think, like I said, a lot of free resources here on my website, emilycreekmore.com. Take advantage of it, read it, and put the information to use. And like I said, if you want to help me out, you know, I have five books on Amazon. I also available at Barnes & Noble. If you want to help me out, you can go buy one of the books. I appreciate it. You'll get a good book. I'll get a little bit of help as far as keeping this channel running and things like that and i like to have people buying my books because it makes me feel good that someone thinks that my information is good enough to pay 15 dollars for in a book you know online things in a war type situation could definitely go down so this website might not be available if you have you know paperback books you always have those so i like have books you can see here I have a lot of prepping books over here and this is all prepping related books on this bookshelf over here prepping related gardening medical survival wilderness survival different things but it's all about prepping every book over here is about prepping a good library is also something that you need it does have to be like this and i actually have about 400 more books out here in the building i didn't i didn't fit in this shelf this shelf here it's just the books that I like the most, that I think are the most useful and are the best. I have, like I said, about 400 more books in my storage building out there stored in containers to keep them free from, you know, mice and things like that. But I put my main ones in here. You don't have to go that extensive. I mean, I went full in when it comes to books because I like to read, I like books, I like to write, and I like knowledge. And I was trying to preserve knowledge because I know the Internet 
could go down. And then where are you at? You have nothing. You have, you had it, then it's gone, just like that. And you have a book, you can pick that up. Look, there it is. So much better, I think, to have books. But you can get pretty much all the books you need for $500, probably even less than that. I really looked into how much it would cost to get books and everything that you might need. And it depends on your barter trades and things like that. You know, if you are going to be a gunsmith, for example, getting books on how to do that is good. They're expensive, but they're something you need to have. Spare parts and tools and things like that. But books have knowledge. Books contain that knowledge. Books store that knowledge. You can't keep all the knowledge up here all the time. Sometimes you forget. Sometimes you need to go look to make sure you remember correctly. So having paperback books is something I definitely recommend because it's the internet, boom, at any time could go down. Cyber attack, EMP, the lines could be cut, communications could be cut, and you have, if you're, rela if you're relying on online information sources like YouTube and websites, you'll be shit out of luck, the thing goes. Up shit creek without a paddle. <laughs> so books is definitely recommended. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, get a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Emily Creek, more mighty here, and I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully.